Hi, it's Bridget. Welcome to Above Life's channel. The purpose here is to inspire your spirit and to fill you up with hope. This is a video where I'm going to chat a little bit about YouTube comments and I'm going to respond to some of the reoccurring themes that I see in some of my video comments. So that's what this video is. It's not a channeling video, but I'm going to chat with you. And I'm in the kitchen. Uh, you can just pretend that you're right in front of me, which is the kitchen table, and just hanging out and relaxing. I have to do mom stuff. This morning I'm very busy. I'm making some chili. You're going to hear the hamburger browning in the background. It's like 9 a.m. And I'm making chili because my daughter is participating in a fundraiser tonight for the community food shelf, and I've got to make some food to bring so that it can be part of the event. So I'm doing chili because she asked. And you guys, I'm usually not one of those moms that makes a bunch of stuff. I just don't do that. Like I don't have time for that. And usually I'll just buy something and bring it if I have to or give my kid money and she can take care of it. But today I'm making it. However, I neglected to plan ahead and I did not take out the hamburger yesterday. So this morning I have frozen hamburger. I'm trying to do thaw and then I'm gonna pop it in my new little crock pot and make some chili. So you're gonna hear that in the background. And I'm sorry for my vegan friends. I know I have some vegan friends that watch, so I'm sorry. Yes, it's, I am using meat. So anyway, I wanted to make sure that I was able to check in with you and connect with you and talk to you about some of the comments that, um, the comment themes that I see reoccurring. And I know that this isn't the most ideal background, for you guys because if I turn, if I move like this, oh, you can see my spirit guide over my shoulder. No, 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 no. There's a obviously a window in the front and you guys, you know what? I am gonna appreciate this light of the sun right now because we are getting like a major snowstorm blizzard and it's April. Yeah, I know, remember I live in Minnesota and so eh, whatever it is what it is, so. All right, so as far as comments go, I've had, I'm gonna to try to focus on the comments that are like value added and positive, and I'm gonna try really hard not to get snarky about and sassy <laughs> about the comments that are rude. Because for those of you who really give me thoughtful questions or really ask things that are thought provoking, I really appreciate that. I think that's lovely. And for those of you who've been binging on my videos, hey, thank you. I appreciate that too. That's a really big compliment because I do that too sometimes. I'll binge, especially when I need something else to focus on for a while, you know, change my energy. I will binge too on really positive podcasts or things like that. So I totally think that's a compliment. So thank you. But one of the things that I, I was asked recently, probably in response to um, the fact that I've shared some videos where you guys can actually to help facilitate you having an experience of connection with Prince in the afterlife and with Freddie Mercury in the afterlife and yes I will continue to do a few more of those but I actually have recorded some meditations and shared them in a video format so that you can but so that I can help to maybe give you the opportunity to facilitate that connection experience for yourself because what it really takes is just practice practices not practice to make perfect for connection but practices reoccurring routines where you connect and i really want to provide you with the experience so that you know that you have access to intuition you have access to energy flow and thus connection and so that's why i have done some of those a couple of meditation videos you can find those right now. At the time I'm doing this video, you can find those at the Prince playlist for a connection with Prince. And you can find it on the Freddie Mercury playlist for a connection with Freddie. And I have a couple of more that I'll share in the future as well, all right? So the point of, and so some of you that have watched, listened to the meditation to connect with Freddie Mercury, some of you, have asked, well, how does this work? Or how do I know if I connect? And the response that I have to that, how do I know if it works? Or how do I know if it connects? I can tell you right away that there, that natural question is 
it's indicative of a level of resistance where you're not sure if you should believe that you personally have the ability to connect. And I'm going to tell you right now that you have a spirit, you have a soul. And because of that, you have access to a language of energy. And the language of energy forms a bridge and makes connection. Spirit to spirit, soul to soul, energetic vibrations. Now the heart chakra or the heart energy space is how we sense and feel. And that is the easiest way to interpret the language of energy. So because you ask that question, it's natural, I think, to have a little bit of doubt but do not allow yourself to get bogged down in old school, old patterning, old belief systems that limit you and that tell you what you're not and give yourself permission to recognize that you might have some resistance in that. And so release your expectations. Don't expect perfection. Don't think that you're going to listen to something and magically all of a sudden it's going to work the first time. It's like riding a bike. Okay. The first couple times you do it, you're not going to just naturally do it. It's like learning how to walk. You don't put a baby on the ground and say, here, walk, walk, you know. First they, what, develop the muscles, then they start to crawl, then they start to pull themselves up, then they start to gradually walk and then they run, right? It's a process. It's a learning process. So this isn't just something where you flip a switch and magic, it happens. And day to day, it's gonna be different. Some days you'll be able to connect easily, readily. Other days, it's just like talking to a brick wall. It doesn't always work. And that is the same way for me too, you guys. That is the same way for me too when I do meditations. If I do, if I listen to guided visualizations or meditations, it's the same way for me too. Why? Because you're different every day. So it's okay. It's not always gonna work and it's not always gonna be perfect and that's not the goal. The goal is not perfection, it's practice. And connection is the desired outcome, and that is the experience that you have. The fact that you're willing to try and that you're willing to show up and try it again and again. Try it every day for a week. Try it every day for three weeks. Just try. Try. And there's lots of different formats that you can use to connect besides a meditation or a visualization. Okay, there's other ways to connect. Which brings me to another question. I guess my advice on that would be, don't give up. You are so much more than you know that you are. And you just got to be willing to be open to that. Okay? And it's natural to have resistance. It's natural to have a little bit of doubt. But don't let that bury you. All right? No no pun intended. Okay. That was such a poor choice of words, Bridget. I'm not going to edit that out either. Because this is just me talking to you like we're friends. Okay? All right, so another question that comes in kind of related to that is a question about how to connect in writing related to a recent video that I shared where I actually, I was so busy that I just grabbed my notebook and I wrote instead of channeled out loud because it was a crazy busy night at my house and stuff. And it was at the dinner table. I talked about it. That was actually a channeling that I did with Freddie Mercury. So that's also on the Freddie Mercury playlist if you want to know what video she's talking about. Where she talked about writing, what? Um, so I wrote, I wrote, and while I was doing that, I was so in the process of just writing, grabbed a notebook and a pen and just was writing. My husband was across the table from me and he, you know, you always have your phones around, right? He grabbed his phone and recorded me. And I'm like, what? So when I talked to him and told him that I was going to um, share this video of this channel by reading, I, I read, the notes that I had and I was going to share it with you guys, make a video and share it with you guys. And this was several months after I actually did it, right? And actually did the writing. And I told him about that and he said, I have video of that and we can use that video piece and I can edit it in. I can bring it right in if you want me to do that. I thought that is fantastic. Yes, do that. Because I want to show you guys how there are so many ways to connect. It's energy and it's energy is a language. And the language is this sensory kind of experience and expression. And it's connected to your intuition and your gut instincts and your feelings and emotions in the heart space. And it's hard to explain in words because it's not a, a language that is recognizable by human words. The closest thing to spirit connection, soul to soul, spirit to spirit connection is music 
or vibration tones, that's the closest thing I could compare to what it's like in energy, okay? And so the writing piece is an important uh, tool for you. So how do you do that? Well, even if, so, okay, so I don't know if you guys have this experience growing up, but writing in a journal wasn't really my thing. I tried to do it off and on, even though I was an avid writer. I loved to write from like third grade on. I mean, essays, all that stuff. I loved writing and creative writing, especially because it gave me an outlet to express myself. It was really a channel. So writing is a channel and it's available to all of us. And the beautiful thing about writing when you want to connect in spirit is that it provides the mind participation. It, it allows the mind to utilize human words that it helps things make more sense. The tricky part about writing is while it can be a wonderful flow state and a channel where you just write, 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 it can get, it can clear your emotions, it can allow you to stop overthinking and not be, have analysis paralysis. But the tricky thing about writing is that you're not, in, it's not intended when you do spirit connection, whether you're trying to channel yourself and your own spirit in your body, or you're trying to channel or connect with someone one of your loved ones or a famous person to get advice or insight or just to build relationship of connection, you cannot write with the intent or the goal of the outcome to be being able to reread, process, understand in your mind because that's not what's going to happen. You cannot take spiritual context, content, information, energy, and understand it effectively with the mind. You can manipulate it with your mind, you can make it mean different things, you can emphasize words, specific words that are chosen, you can put the energy in the wrong spots. It's like putting an exclamation, part, an exclamation mark after the word with, instead of at the end of the sentence. Like it doesn't make sense to do that. The mind can help to articulate the energy into a state where you can process it and the mind is included, but it's not the be all end all. It's one teeny tiny piece. And so after you do the writing, the, the point or the goal isn't to go back and reread it 15 times to really try to hone in on and pick out this specific, make meaning of things that you're with your mind. You can reread it if you choose to do that, but I would recommend you wait you just write, 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 write. And if you want to go back and reread it, you can. But do it, do so after you've had opportunity to allow the energy to flow and be clear. So that when you're reading it, you have a fresh mind, a different perspective. You're not desperately looking for answers in the writing and the exact words that you used and getting frustrated with the fact that you don't feel them. And so there's barriers and there's resistance. And then all oh, the spiritual stuff doesn't work. Again, the writing takes practice. It's not a one and done kind of thing. This is not a McDonald's drive-through. Spiritual connection is a practice and it's relationship. It's learning to understand what energy means for you, all right? So writing is a great tool. Again, clears energy, helps to release stuff. If you're worried about other people reading what you write, you don't have to have a fancy journal. You can just have a notebook, then rip it up and throw it away. Throw it at the garbage at work. Don't even throw it away at your house. You know, you don't have to recycle it. You can throw it in the garbage, it's okay. You can burn it if you want, make it a whole ritual thing. But writing is, and, and effect, it's much more effective too if you do pen to paper because it's the physical movement and the flow. And I'm not talking about automatic writing. That's different. It's almost, the automatic writing is almost like a trans channel kind of state. It's a little bit different. That's not what I'm talking about. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about building a relationship with spiritual connection for yourself where your mind is involved a little bit, but it knows its place. It knows its place. Your spirit is the one that will really give you the guidance. And if you build a relationship, it's like being pen pals, <laughs> whether it's with the afterlife, with a special guest, that you invite in, whether it's with your spirit guides or your archangels, or whether it's with your spirit, you're building a relationship. 
and you're forming and learning the language of that relationship through energy. And you're, you're utilizing words to do that, and that helps your mind to be part of that process. Okay, so I've probably over -talk, talked about all this, but so those are two things that you can use for spiritual connection for yourself. And the biggest advice, again, is just to use it as a practice. You don't have to write like you're going to be graded. You don't have to write like other people are going to read it. You don't have to worry about your punctuation or the capitals or lowercase letters, or even if it's legible, that doesn't even matter. So if you want more resources about writing, there is a great resource, uh, Julia Cameron. She wrote the book, Artist's Way. I have not read the book. I am familiar with Julia Cameron and her practice, and she does a practice called Morning Pages, Morning Pages, where she starts the day this way and clears the energy for herself by writing. And so I'd recommend you check that out on Google or YouTube. You guys can check it out. You can find it yourself. Julia Cameron, and it's The Artist's Way. All right. Okay, so those are two of the questions that I get. And obviously now my, my stuff is done here. So I'm going to pop it into the, let's grab a spoon here and just pop it into the crock pot. Crock pots are great. I love that old school invention, right? I know now we've got like, you know, Instapots and all that. I don't have one of those, but I'm still old school, I guess. Crock pot, crock pot. Oh, there we go. This is hot too. Okay, this is good. It's looking pretty good. All right, so some of the other questions that you guys have asked me are things that are just really based on your own experience, I think. And over the course of your lifetime, we're all going to have different kinds of experience, which is what creates our values, right, and our belief systems. And there are, it's natural to ask about like religion and how that fits and all the the messages you were given as a child or growing up or maybe even in the relationship that you're in now and it almost feels like you there's almost like this guilt or this fear that comes with trying to discern what fits for you and who you are today and now versus who you were whose you were growing up because you were under the guidelines of some adults that role models, either parents, grandparents, um, older siblings, um, church leaders, maybe school, where it really has an impact on you. And so now today, when you're exposed to some different things that are new or that seem not as structured, because spirit connection and intuition, you guys, and energy, there's not a lot of structure. The structure is like, uh, nature and sacred geometry and the elements, earth and fire and, and the concepts of spirit guides or spiritual totem animals or it's, there's so much that's available that it can be very overwhelming. Like, do you want to study shamanism? Do you want to study um, connecting with angels? Do you want to be a hands-on healer, a sound healer? Uh, do you want to learn about life coaching? What and, and do you want to do health or do you want to do? I mean, there's so much available, so it can be very overwhelming. It seems disorganized. It seems very, to me anyway, it seems very disorganized. And so because of that, it makes you think, well, is this really legit? Is this for real? It doesn't seem like there's a lot of buy-in in one particular swim lane here. There's too many different choices and options, and so I'm not sure what to believe. Well that's the whole opportunity point here for you to open yourself up to discern for you and feeling what feels right for you is the whole point for me it's the whole experience for you to connect is to connect within yourself first deep in your gut and your belly that gut instinct that you've had all your lifetime and to recognize that what's right for you now is different than what you did in the past. And it will be different than what you do in the future. You have to give yourself at least the freedom to, to optimize the relationship within yourself with your own soul, your own spirit, and begin, just begin to start to trust yourself and your discernment. It doesn't matter what kind of pat mistakes you've made in the past. And you're gonna make mistakes in the future. And that's part of life. That's the learning and the growth process. And we don't have to dig on ourselves all the time for that. So it is natural to kind of have like this guilty feeling or this uncertainty and this 
gosh, there's no structure here. It's not as clear cut. There's not rules in spirit contact and spirit connection. There's only our personal levels of discernment and our personal choices as to how we, how we want to proceed, how we want to value, what we want to value, and what we choose to participate in as we learn and grow. And so that unknown can be scary because there's too much freedom, almost too much freedom for you. But that's the way it is, you guys. It's awesome. It's like you finally get this freedom that you've wanted all your life and you have no idea how to proceed and so that's scary. And there's really not a wrong way. Give yourself the opportunity to have experiences and not try not to look for the answer because there's no answers. There are no answers. There are only options, opportunities. It's a buffet style living. That's what it is. If something doesn't taste right, doesn't feel right, it probably isn't. So try something different, <laughs> but don't, you have to be your own best advocate, your own best cheerleader, your own best, hey girl, it's okay. It's okay. Let's just pick yourself up, dust yourself off and let's try this or let's try this, that kind of a thing. Don't look for a quick fix or a quick answer. This is about experiential learning and that's how you grow. And the most important thing is a relationship with your spirit. That's what intuition is. That's what channeling helps you to do. You get guidance, you get inspiration, and you connect for yourself because the purpose at Above Life Channel is to inspire your spirit, to fill you with hope, so that you can live your life because this, <laughs> this is your life. This is your life, it's such a gift. You are a gift, whether you believe it or not, you are. So live it, live, just live. This is Bridget, thank you so much for watching this commentary on comments. Oh yeah, yeah, I over talk, I over talk. Use this as a binge video or something while you're doing your laundry. I think mine's done actually in the background or making your, lunch or your dinner or whatever. It's great to see you guys. It feels so good to be able to connect with you. And I feel like literally you and I just hanging out and talking and I love that. I love casual stuff like this. So it's wonderful. Thank you so much for being part of the journey and for sharing it with me as well.